Mrs. Jones! Mrs. Jones! Uh, what do you want? I've got to deliver this plant to Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones! Look here, my friend. We're making a motion picture here. That's a matter of opinion. In the vast collection of Hollywood films from the 1940s and 50s, a select few have withstood the test of time and are triumphantly remembered today, deservedly hailed as timeless comedy classics. These remarkable pictures have consistently brought laughter to audiences across generations. However, within this trove of comedic brilliance there exists one film in particular that reigns supreme, and yet it remains largely hidden, forgotten by modern viewers, oblivious to its lasting impact. This film flaunts an exceptional level of humor and originality, a special brand of comedy that undoubtedly shaped and influenced the foundations that many of the most brilliant comic minds would stand and rise from. Despite all this, this gem of a film remains obscure. Defining 1941's Hell's a Poppin' proves to be a curious challenge, kind of like it deliberately defies description, so maybe we should start nearer the beginning. In 1938, a radical new musical review made its debut on Broadway. It was a bombastic collection of comedy skits and musical numbers, a variety show of sorts that included the quirky talent of dancers, unique singers, identical twins, animals, magicians, and celebrity impersonators. Outwardly, one might perceive it as a typical, moderately pleasing Broadway offering. However, the trick and distinction of this show was found in its rowdy vaudevillian roots and the calculated art of appearing to go off the rails. The audience had bananas, beans, potty seats, eggs, and live chickens hurled at them. Loud shots exploded, planted hecklers raised a rumpus. A ticket scalper cavorted up and down the aisles with tickets for a rival show. A clown tried to extricate himself from a straitjacket for the show's duration. An elderly woman, outraged that her dress had been lifted by a trick gust of air from under the stage, attacked the entire cast with her umbrella. A woman persisted in bellowing, Oscar, Oscar! The audience was bombarded with rubber snakes and spiders, and a whirling madness of cacophonous pandemonium and blatant boorishness engulfed the theater. In reality, each interruption and mishap was carefully choreographed and timed, transforming the show into a masterful display of controlled chaos. Somewhere amidst the bedlam, the production did include conventional musical numbers, but that wasn't what was filling the seats. It was the fourth wall shattering slapstick and the zany, circus-like atmosphere brought to chaotic fruition by its rollicking comedy hosts. The show was called Hell's a Poppin', and it was written and anchored by comedic duo, stars of radio and vaudeville, John Ole Olson and Harold Chick Johnson. Their comedic approach was a blend of slapstick, vaudeville, absurdity, and most skillfully of all, unpredictability. Through sight gags, physical comedy, and an incredible ability to push the boundaries of Broadway conventions, Olsen and Johnson demolished the fourth wall, engaging directly with the audience and inviting them into the show. At the time, Olsen and Johnson had been a team for decades. They were a hit on the stage and somewhat mildly on the screen. Having appeared and headlined in a handful of films for MGM, Warner Brothers, and Republic Pictures throughout the 1930s. Pretty fast. What is this, a minute stick? No, a minute stick take a half hour. How much are your club stakes, Chuck? Sixty cents, Billy. Gee, that's pretty high. Pretty tough when you have to pay sixty cents for a steak, isn't it? Sure, but it's tougher when you only pay twenty-five. These films, while enjoyable, failed to fully harness the distinctive brand of controlled chaos that Olsen and Johnson were renowned for on stage. And while they were nominal successes, it was evident that their command of the theater hadn't quite yet carried over to the screen. Give me another A. Give me a long A. Is that long enough? By the end of 1941, Hell's a Poppin' had had over 1,400 unique performances, making it the longest-running Broadway show at the time. Over its run, the show would be constantly rewritten and tweaked to stay topical and surprising. No show would ever be the same. A road production would begin touring the United States with similar success. Olsen and Johnson were at the top of their game, all while Universal Pictures were finding benefit with a comedy duo of their own. Now the whale kept the Jonah, he hit the apples and he ate the stool, and then the whale swam away. Look, wait a minute, look, how much more of this story have you got to tell? Just another second, now what do you keep interrupting <laughs> oh, me oh, for? All right, go ahead. Ah, Biffle Dipple! Here, here, here. Now you made me say a bad word. Please. I'm sorry. All right, go ahead. Perhaps the only similarity between Olsen and Johnson and Abbott and Costello was that there were two of them, and they were very funny. In contrast to similar artists of the era, Olsen and Johnson were equally goofy and hilarious. Neither played the straight man. They both exuded an infectious energy that kept audiences laughing. Recognizing the potential and capitalizing on the comedy duo formula they were finding with Abbott and Costello, Universal would court Olsen and Johnson to a four-picture deal, of which an adaptation of Hell's a Poppin' would be the first. Hell's a Poppin' would be adapted for the cinema by screenwriter Nat Perrin, and H.C. Potter would take the helm as director. 
Right from the start, Hell's a Poppin' sets itself apart by gently tapping on the fourth wall as a movie projectionist played by Shemp Howard begins rolling the film. This is a fine pick em, Billy. Fifteen years I've been running these pictures, and now all of a sudden I gotta be an actor. It's typical Hollywood fare, a chorus line crooning a sentimental ballad. as their platform steps buckle, and they plummet to hell. A content note quickly reminds us that any similarity between Hell's a Poppin' and a motion picture is purely coincidental, as any song adds to the madness proudly proclaiming that Anything can happen and it probably will, Hell's a Poppin'. It's a declaration Olsen and Johnson do their best to deliver on. Amidst the chaotic and infernal mayhem unfolding on the screen, we are eventually introduced to our unique headliners. That's the first taxi driver that ever went straight where I told him to. Without any hint of hesitation, Olsen and Johnson swiftly destroy the fourth wall by getting into a heated argument with a the theater projectionist. Rewind this film, will you? What's the matter with you guys? Don't you know you can't talk to me and the audience? Well, we're doing it, aren't we? Yes, folks. <laughs> this is Hell's a Poppin'. <laughs> As promised, Hell's a Poppin' will be breaking all the rules, and it's just getting started. As it turns out, we're not watching a completed film yet. It's a work in progress. Olsen and Johnson are still on set, attempting to shoot their cinematic version of Hell's a Poppin' for the screen, but conforming to the standards of a traditional Hollywood production proved to be a special task. Like translating an episode of Saturday Night Live into a definitive narrative, Hell's a Poppin' the show never had a plot. But Hollywood movies have a proven and uncomplicated formula, and every movie, even a madcap venture like Hell's a Poppin', has to fit within that mold. Fellas, we gotta have a story, a love story. Why? Why, I'll tell you why, because we gotta have one, because every picture has one. Listen, buddy, for three years we did Hell's a Puppet on Broadway, and that's the way we want it on the screen. This is Hollywood, we change everything here, we got to. Reluctantly, yet playfully, Olsen and Johnson begrudgingly accept the necessity of a contrived and sentimental storyline. However, that narrative is cleverly concealed between numerous layers and complications. Taking a step back, we can somewhat observe the convoluted structure of Hell's a Puppet. It's a movie about a play in a movie starring Olsen and Johnson, of a screenplay in a movie starring Olsen and Johnson about Hell's a Poppin', all taking place in a movie theater that's currently playing the movie we're watching. It's a picture about a picture about Hell's a Poppin'. It's a great script. Feel how much it weighs. And as needed, a story is in there somewhere, all involving a standard love triangle set against the familiar backdrop of putting on a show in the hopes of sending said show to Broadway. Even when it does concede to convention, Hell's a Poppin' keeps the proverbial shepherd hook close at hand, ready to disrupt expectations in an instant. The momentum in the film's brash setup never really lets up. Jokes are delivered in rapid succession with relentless and inexplicable energy. I didn't hear your first name. Uh, what? Uh, well, you've got to speak louder. I can't hear you. <laughs> Given the presentation, it's not much of a challenge to envision this all unfolding before you on a stage. The shtick was as effective and similar as it was on Broadway. Some of it was exactly the same. Oscar! Oscar! Right back, Joe! Olsen and Johnson assume the roles of witty prop masters for a significant portion of the film, giving them a giant toy box of sight gags to play with. Oh boy, we've got everything but the kitchen sink. One sink. While they undoubtedly shine as the stars of the show, they also serve as transitional ringmasters, always ready to cede the spotlight to a bevy of extremely talented co-stars. Did anyone ever tell you you dance like Ginger Rogers? No. No wonder. <laughs> all the players, from the actors to the filmmakers to the screenwriters and projectionists, they're all each somehow active participants in the film. No way! While technically in a supporting role, a bulk of the film's energy is carried by Martha Ray, who stars as Chick Johnson's sister. She's a living Looney Tune, man crazy and brassy. The film is a showcase of Ray's knack for physical comedy and song and dance. She never hesitates to go all in. With a fearless commitment, she throws herself fully into every comedic moment, and it pays off. Alongside her in the ensemble is Misha Auer, who assumes the role of a sneaky Russian nobleman who, in a comedic twist, publicly pretends to be a fake Russian nobleman. But you I if you find out I'm not a phony, they are no longer amused. No longer amused, they are no longer interested. No longer interest, no longer money. No longer money, I'm just like you, Count Alexander Alexandrovich Alexandrovsky, a poor Slav. 
Meanwhile, Hugh Herbert adds oddity to the mix as a detective slash magician. Hey, better put that violin on a diet. The film undeniably falls into the musical genre, and the songs featured here, while disconnected, are truly catchy and exceptional. Watch the birdie, we'll take a can of camera shot. Watch the birdie, come on and give it all you've got. Watch the birdie, just look around and pick a spot and hold it. Ironically, most of the film's modern-day notoriety has nothing to do with Olsen and Johnson at all. Feel a rhythmic brainstorm coming on. But with a masterful swing dance troupe known as Whitey's Lindy Hoppers. Their mesmerizing and expertly choreographed display is often lauded as one of the greatest dance sequences ever put to film. and athletic performance is a perfect accompaniment to the pandemonium of the rest of the film. Uniting the whole thing together is the remarkable cinematography of Elwood Woody Burdell and the special photographic effects crafted by John P. Fulton. Fulton's legacy extends well beyond this film as he would go on to design iconic special effects sequences and countless features, including notable works for Alfred Hitchcock and The Parting of the Red Sea in The Ten Commandments. In Hell's a Pop, and Fulton's tricks play a vital role in translating the mayhem of the stage show onto the screen. Together, Bradell and Fulton push the boundaries of the medium, granting Olsen and Johnson the freedom to explore and even transcend the seeming constraints of the movie frame in a polished and hilarious fashion. Oh. Just a moment, Woody. We're having a little trouble with this film. That Louie again. Hey, Louie, will you keep your mind on your work? Will you get away from this? Oh, don't tell me what to do! Watch me. Oh, boy, I'm, I'm getting a little seasick. So am I. Hey, maybe we can handle this ourselves. Give me a hand here. Up. Oh, little brother. Ah, it's got it. That's it. I didn't spin it. Oh! Where's Chick? Hey, how did you get up there? How did you get down there? Come on, Woody, here we go again. Be careful, will you? Look out for my head. You're hurting me, be careful. Cut it out, will you? Hey, you no, know there's a show going on down here. Where right the cast bring the film in zany energy, it's Fulton and Burdell who bring innovation and artistic vision, elevating Hell's a Pop into something uniquely singular. While emphasizing the comedy is the main driver of the photography, there's a lot of visually striking imagery here as well. Even in the rare moments when the film is not actively trying to be goofy, the cinematography manages to be poetic in its transitions and staging. It's baffling that throughout its entire 80-minute runtime, every gag in Hell's a Poppin' hits the mark. The jokes are relentless, rapid-fire, and combine nearly every kind of humor imaginable. Hell's a Poppin' holds all of the comedy staples, and Olsen and Johnson are our veritable staplers. I know, but what are these for? Coat of arms. Now, oh, wait a minute. Thought they burnt that. Maybe we can talk Woody into giving Kitty the brush off. I know, but how? Well, I remember why my boyfriend gave me the brush off. Kitty's not that kind of a girl. How much longer do I have to put up with this? Until we finish this picture. How long? Until we finish this picture. Oh, no! Okay, send for another cameraman. That's it. Where are we? Over further. There we are. Hold it. Relatives. I'd have that half-wit fired if he wasn't your cousin. My cousin? I thought he was your cousin. He said well, that's that... what he told me. While oh, undoubtedly a product of the 1940s, Hell's a Poppin' feels ahead of its time. Its zany and visionary nature still feel relevant, even when viewed with fresh eyes today. The film's genius plainly served as the inspiration for subsequent generations of comedy filmmakers. Laughing at films from the 70s and 80s? Odds are those scenes were influenced in some capacity by Hell's a Poppin'. Olsen and Johnson, by intention or not, had set the groundwork for much of what would follow in the world of comedy. May I take your picture? What? May I take your picture? Sure. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, boys. Let's get some pictures. On a technical level, the film is a valuable lesson in the art of timing, wit, and the creative use of special effects, perfectly navigating a balance of silliness and intellect. I'm not the man for her, Jeff. She needs someone like you, someone taller than she is, mentally. Narratively, the underlying moral of Hell's a Poppin', if you choose to find one, is that amidst chaos and unpredictability, there is room for unexpected success. Challenging norms can often yield positive outcomes. Olsen and Johnson would make three more films as part of their universal contract, and while each of them offered their own enjoyable experience, none of them quite managed to reach the heights and delightful chaos of Hell's a Poppin'. Yes? Universe's most sensational comedy team outside. Oh, Abbott and Costello will send them right in. Let 
As had been before, Olsen and Johnson found greater success and recognition on the stage, and it was there that they would continue to thrive for the remainder of their lives. It is deeply puzzling to learn the thankless trajectory these comedic legends took off of the silver screen. Adding additional obstacles to their legacy, Helzepoppen has unfortunately been holed up in unclear and unresolved copyright issues for several decades, keeping it from a proper home video release and restoration in the United States. Nevertheless, copies of the film are easily findable to stream via an internet search, and it is unquestionably worthy of your time and appreciation. I'm very, very sorry to interrupt at this time, ladies and gentlemen, but there's a very urgent call for Mr. Robert T. McChesney. Robert T. McChesney. Go to your home immediately. You have become the father of twins. Robert T. McChesney. What am I running for? My name's Miller. The claim that the film has been entirely forgotten is perhaps an exaggeration. Like a well-kept secret, it has garnered a loyal following among classic film enthusiasts. However, it's also obvious that Hells of Boppin has not yet received the widespread acclaim it carefully earned and desperately deserves. So here's to you, Hells of Boppin, one of the greatest, funniest, and maybe more important comedy pictures of the 1940s. This is Levity Light Classics.